there are certain things that crop up frequently in Roger Dean's artwork. Uh, impossible landscape uh, rock formations. Uh, one of the things that you'll see frequently is uh, is uh, anti-gravity. You'll see things floating, floating islands and, and uh, very much things like this. It's all, it's really beautiful stuff. A lot of the stuff has uh, almost a sinewy uh, texture. I looked at this and I thought, you know, you could probably look at a celery stalk and think in a larger scale and come up with this kind of landscape. Uh, it's really in, in how you think, uh, different ways of thinking about normal things and playing mentally with scale that can give you some really good ideas for some fantasy artwork. Yeah, gravity seems to be selective in these landscapes. Sometimes land formations float, but yet, you know, trees seem to stay put. Uh, the other thing is you'll see uh, uh, sometimes fish on dry land floating through the air. Likewise, you'll see, you know, things that ought to be flying in underwater scenes. Always a mix-up of, of uh, what nature gives you and just putting it together in different ways. Another feature in Roger Dean's work that I really liked, if you'll notice in this one in particular, the, the uh, waterfalls way in the back. Always put a lot of waterfalls in, and that's something I'm trying to learn to do. Uh, I wish I could tell you guys that I have this whole thing nailed, but this has been something that, I mean, I've been practicing the Bob Ross thing for a long time. This I've been kind of bringing into Sketch Club uh, just only for a couple of months. So uh, I, I'm... I'm kind of finding my way through this style as well. A lot of times in Roger Dean's work you'll notice things like this, just absolutely stunning, just vivid colors uh, used for highlight and contrast in a very left and right lighting approach, very low sun level. And you'll notice in this one as well that the colors in the sky really have very little to do with, with uh, the colors that are used to shade. So you can really mix these up and break a lot of rules. In fact, I think that's the whole point with fantasy landscapes is to take rules and bend them and break them from uh, normal landscapes. Another regular feature in Roger Dean's work are impossibly glassy bodies of waters. Absolutely so still that there's no ripple at all. It's really another hallmark of, of his style. And the, uh, the thing you'll see in the background, that land formation, that kind of a mushroom uh, with, you know, with 
terra firma on the top. That's a recurring theme as well. And you'll notice that a lot of these landscapes, like I said, are land formations. Uh, they have like this organic, almost like they're living uh, things. They're really fascinating. Another detail you'll notice in this one is that he tends to put these long connecting bridges in. I've been doing that in some of my recent work as well. But these long connecting bridges that seem to almost go nowhere or it's just, it's just interesting stuff. Well, the thing about this is when, uh, when I did the uh, Bob Ross thing, I had a very specific procedure in mind. We started with the background and worked forward. I'm not necessarily going to do that. I want to show you guys in particular uh, ways that you can sort of get that watercolor approach. Roger Dean used watercolors a lot. So uh, I kind of want to show you how I found a way to sort of approximate that look. And it starts out with just drawing a vector blob in... in on this thing uh, just dropping in a color that's the way I'm gonna start this so I'm just gonna pick a medium gray uh, vector at 100 and just scribble in something Okay, very funny. So, uh, yeah, it's a winter scene. So anyway, now I'm going to go in with uh, the brush set to on. I'm going to use the smooth brush. I really like this because it tends to... You'll see as I go back and forth, now I'm going to take this in a sort of diagonal grain like you've seen me do with uh, one of my recent ones. Uh, I'm going to try to pretty much do the same thing. The first thing I'm going to do is to take the vector, put it on a race, and kind of hollow out some little interesting areas. I, actually, I don't even think I have to because it's pretty interesting as is, but I, I want you to see you know, how you can do certain things. So I'm just going to play with the vector on a race now for a couple of seconds. That's a good way to get sort of a twisted uh, formation. It's kind of what I'm going for is a corkscrew sort of thing. So you can see the way I was taking curves out, some of them sagging, some of them lifting on the other side, and it gives it that screwy effect. Now I'm going to put the brush in on mode and use the smooth tool with uh, maybe just a slightly darker gray. I don't want, really want to go black just yet. And uh, watch how this this brush it does a great job of filling in shadows you really you really don't have to work too much it's a very uh, same thing as as uh, when I was doing the mountains with the Bob Ross thing you kind of let it go don't try to control too much so
you can see how rather quickly just through scribbling just I'd, I'd have to call it kind of guided scribbling because you do a little more where you think you want the shadows but you can see with this this brush it really gives a nice kind of a rock grain texture uh, sort of that almost shale look already and it's kind of automatic I'm all about making it as easy as possible so I'm just gonna keep going a little more on this I'm using very low fall off on this at all I have it set for zero I haven't really even actually played experimented with the controls too much I kinda just use them and go with whatever comes out You have any questions so far about anything? Okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink that down, kind of put it off to the side, and we'll play with some other form of uh, another landform. Basically, the floating rock. We'll go, we'll go with the floating rock. I'm going to start with the same thing, just a vector, just kind of draw a blob, and then uh, I'll do the same kind of shading with it. It's really, there's really nothing that much different than what you just saw me do. No, there's really no set place. You just kind of come in from the side. I have the, the brush set to on, so it just starts at the edge, and I'm just, you just kind of wiggle in really anything. I'm not trying to really overthink any of the lines because nature doesn't overthink anything that it does.
So you can see right there, it's just pretty easy to get a texture. All I'm doing is taking the smooth brush and just scribbling it. That's it. I'm not really even thinking about it. The shadows just kind of automatically happen. And then you can go back in with vector and, uh, and augment the shadows and light that you want to. So I'm going to play with that a little bit. I'm going to go uh, put the vector on, you know, a gradient, 50%. And uh, maybe just a darker gray, and we'll add some shadows to it. By the way, I have my little dish of talcum powder out here for my stylus. Always remember that tip, just to keep the rubber stylus moving nice and smooth on the glass. Just a little bit of talcum powder, or baby powder. All right, so there you go. You can see in very little time, and it's it's basically uh, very similar to the technique that I used for the mountains and the Bob Ross thing. It's it's just an adaptation of that technique, and instead of using strictly vectors, I used the smooth pen uh, in there as well. So okay, so now we got these two things just sitting out in the middle of the no of, of nowhere. So let's uh, give them kind of a nowhere to sit on. Let's let's uh, make a background for them at this point. Just so they don't look, you know, yeah, so stuck out in the winter.
I'm going to use the line tool and uh, just a soft brush to lay in just some, some distant fog back there to hide that white line that I can't seem to get rid of any other way. <laughs> Another thing I like to do with these, because the gray looks a little bland, is to throw in just a little bit of color. So I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going to take the vector and just toss in just some subtle tones, just so they're not so gray. Just maybe a little few reds and things like that. Just kind of a wash. Again, you know, keeping in mind that that uh, Roger Dean was a watercolorist, uh, washes of color work really well in this low uh, low opacity. Uh, vectors work really well with this. I think at this point I'm going to throw some clouds in and uh, the other thing that you'll see in a lot of fantasy landscapes are really big planets. You don't see a little tiny moon in them. They always go for broke and put a big planetoid in. 
So I'm going to throw uh, a brush that I should, I could make. I'm not sure there isn't already one available, but I made a brush. My uh, oldest brother is a photographer and took a picture of the super moon a couple of months ago or last month, and I made a brush out of that. So I'm going to put that in there and, and make it really big. And then, of course, you have to have the reflection for the moon, so we got to do that. No, this this moon in particular isn't in the community brushes. I haven't learned. I'd like to make a brush set myself and upload it. I'm not really sure how to do that yet. I've never played around with that. But uh, yeah, I have a few brushes that I'd like to make and and uh, put up there. But no, this is one that I made from a photograph that my uh, my oldest brother took. And seeing as we're on a big glassy thing of water, everything needs its own reflection, so I'm going to go ahead and make reflections for the other things. You probably already figured out I'm just copying down to another layer, flip it, position it, and then I merge them together. Now keep in mind, when you're putting something, uh, its reflection has to be the same distance from the horizon if it's floating above the horizon, its reflection is going to need to be somewhere close to the same distance below the horizon. I, it, it looks strange if you, if you get a misaligned, so...
I don't know how the voice and what you're seeing are syncing up too well, but what I just did was when I flipped that the tower, the twisty tower thing, I uh, when I copied it down and inverted it, you'll notice I changed the color. And I'll do that with the moon as well. Don't really have to, I guess. The moon's pretty bright, but with the land masses, it really helps to sell the reflection if you treat the uh, the reflection you know lighten it up or darken it or something you can go any way that's the nice thing about the fantasy artwork it's all about just experimenting uh, really you're going to come up with some interesting things that you like that may you may be able to show me some new stuff that's what's cool about this I got the lighter reflection from uh, just doing a, a the color adjustment on it and just brightened it up that's all I did was just brighten it up I'm going to go drop in some uh, some clouds. Pretty much I think I'll just go with the same style clouds that you saw me use in the Bob Ross video. Um, not really sure what Roger Dean did for clouds in particular. I know the, uh, the sort of anime style ones that I did, they work well in here, but they're more time consuming, so I'm going to just drop in more of a you know regular cloud kind of thing in here. Once I, um, yeah, I'm looking at how you're talking about how to do the flipping. Um, once I actually invert the thing, I tend to merge it down so it's all on one layer, but the problem is then you kind of lock yourself into the reflection being that distance away. So I'm just, I'm just kind of going through things just for the sake of speeding things up. Normally I'd take my time and have a million layers, and, or ten anyway.
if you remember the last time that I did clouds like this, you put in a layer of clouds like this, a line of them, kind of uneven. Then I'm going to take the airbrush, the soft brush tool, uh, put that on a bigger brush and turn it on a race and just erase the lower side of these clouds leaving the top line intact. You'll see what I mean. Now you go back in and you repeat the procedure again, put a line of clouds in so you get this distance between the layer you just did. You leave some of the dark and then put another layer of clouds in and erase the bottom of that. It doesn't matter what the bottom of this line of cloud looks like, only the top line. I'm only really caring about what I'm putting up against the line that I just did. I'm going to go, uh, as long as we have the time to do it, we're doing pretty well on time, I'm going to add another layer of clouds in as well. The cloud brush that I go to all the time, it's one in, uh, in, it's in the nature section of the, uh, the community brushes. It's, it's my go-to cloud brush for all of them. I'm not really sure what the name of it is, but it's, uh, it's in there.
the nice thing about having these layers that I just already put on here um, if you have the moon or something you're gonna see the moon come through them from behind and clouds are denser than that well the nice thing is with all the highlights now on one layer you can go to put a layer underneath this and just paint in all the dark clouds uh, you know the shadows in any color you want so I'm gonna do that with a medium to darker gray on a layer underneath the white clouds just to give it some depth uh, maybe maybe a little more blue whatever we'll see how it goes Isn't that nice? I mean, you can drop in all those shadows and you've already got all your highlights intact. So they're, you know, it's a, I found it to be a much easier way to try to get depth in clouds than trying to do it all on one layer. Okay, so I'm going to merge down the highlight layer down underneath uh, so the clouds will all be on one layer. And then I'm going to show you something that I just, it's the coolest part. I tell you, BP, I could just, I could just hug you for this. This transform thing is so cool. We'll play with that in a second after I merge the uh, cloud layers. Pretty cool, huh? All right, I'm going to go in and uh, darken up the sky a little bit. Not really happy with that, so I'll add some depth to that as well.
I don't know if it was pretty obvious what I was doing there, but I was uh, taking the star that I initially did comes out kind of pale, so I copied it down, merged the two, uh, swapped layers, copied it down again, merged them, swapped layers. You, you can do that as many times as you need to build up something. Now I'm going to get into just a little bit of the uh, the landscapey stuff that I like to do. Uh, some of the brushes, some greenery, we'll put a little tree up on the top of this thing and uh, play with that for a while. One of the things that I've noticed about Roger Dean's stuff is that when he did a grassy area, this a grassy knoll, <laughs> so to speak, a lot of times he wouldn't give them a lot of texture. He might hit it with an airbrush, uh, kind of a thing to soften one side of it, but generally he didn't put a lot of texture into the grassy areas. He almost let them be just these solid silhouettes, very much like what you're looking at right now.
That's as close to a cat as I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's as close as I can get quickly.
Okay, so this is, you know, we're about an hour into it. I'm not really aiming for a finished picture as much as I'm aiming to show you guys the basic components of how to put these things together. It's really a lot of compositing. I've noticed that you can, you know, make the tower and stick it over there and then, you know, make a bridge and put that in later and these kind of things. So it's kind of, I kind of assemble these things as I go. I'm not sure that's the way Roger worked, but that's the way I'm kind of going in my, uh, my method of exploring this whole thing. You guys got any questions? There was another thing I wanted to know uh, with the landscape class that I did the last time. The thing that I think a lot of people had problems with was getting the look of the mountain the right way. Um, we have time. If you guys want to see some other stuff, if you have questions about the other class, I'm in a great position to, to just show you that kind of stuff as well. What, okay, as far as a compo, what I was thinking, I think it would be interesting if, because one of the recurring themes, the mainstays of Roger Dean's work is the floating island, and just this morning, Farm Girl loaded one up, and it got featured, and I, I thought it was so cool. Everybody likes the floating islands. I think it would be interesting if the compo was everybody gets to make their own unique, if you had your own floating island, what would it be like? I'd like to see what you guys would do with just making up your own little floating island. That's that's a it's a really cool it's a really cool theme to play with.
You guys are getting me completely sidetracked. <laughs> really are. I did want to mention, and I think I already did, that you can, you can actually look at other things like, like say for instance a thing of a broccoli, right? A stalk of broccoli. And if you were to actually draw that thing and color it in a different way, you'd, you'd have one of these floating land masses. You would, you would absolutely have one of these landforms. Everything Roger Dean did, so much of his stuff, was so organic that it really had that sort of look like it came from some other form of nature. I don't know. I don't know why he's there. I've, we're just kind of playing at this point. It's it's pretty much what I have to show you guys. That's the basic techniques that I've learned so far in, in uh, moving towards working, you know, this Roger Dean angle. But uh, the clouds, he didn't really use clouds like that. That's kind of a fabrication. I throw my kind of Bob Ross, you know, angles in there. So I hope you guys learned something from this. Um, you know, I, I'm leaving it as kind of a bad piece of artwork, but I hope you guys learned something. I hope I illustrated enough of the techniques for you. Oh yeah, I get to do this again at 2 in the morning, my time. That should be the fun show. That's the one where I get pretty tired and I'm a little loopy. So if you, uh, if you want the fun show, stick around for the 2 a.m. one. <laughs> I love you guys. I want to tell you, it's been an honor for me again to be able to teach the people that, uh, that regularly impress me so much with their artwork. You guys rock. I'm really happy to be able to, to uh, do this. I'm honored to be able to, to teach you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it.